Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some important mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. But first, you need to know the difference between a city and a downtown. I cannot say the difference between a city and a downtown. Why not? Because downtown is not countable. I cannot say a downtown. One downtown or two downtowns. It's not a countable word. You can say a downtown area. So you can say the difference between a city and a downtown area. But not a downtown. Let's talk about downtown. It's an interesting word because it has different variations. For example, I can say the restaurant is downtown with no preposition. Or I can say the restaurant is in downtown. Both are correct. And if you use a verb with direction and movement like go, normally we say go to, but you don't have to. You can just say go downtown. We're going downtown to go shopping. And if you talk about the name of the city, you put it before the name of the city. For example, downtown Dallas, downtown Miami. We're going to downtown Miami. In that case, we use to. But if you just say downtown, you don't need to. We're going downtown. But never a downtown. Let's practice. Is this a downtown area? That's right. This is a downtown area. In this case, we can say a uh, because you have one area. Where is the restaurant? Is the restaurant downtown? That's right. The restaurant is downtown. Where are they going? Are they going downtown? That's right. They're going downtown. Is this downtown Miami or downtown Dallas? That's right. This is downtown Dallas. This is also not correct. What is a cruise? A cruise is a large ship and you will take a voyage or a journey on the sea. I cannot say a cruise is a large ship. A cruise is not a large ship. A cruise is a ride. When you ride on a ship, that's a cruise. So you can use the verb take. We're going to take a cruise. Or you can use the phrasal verb go on. We're going to go on a cruise. It's the trip. It's not the ship. So what do you call the ship? The ship is called a cruise ship. Let's practice. Is this a cruise ship? That's right. This is a cruise ship. Are they going to take a cruise? That's right. They're going to take a cruise. Or I can use go on. Are they going to go on a cruise? That's right. They're going to go on a cruise. This is also not correct. How do you call this appliance that would go inside your kitchen? Now, how do you call this thing where you listen to music? I cannot say, how do you call this appliance? Or, how do you call this thing? In this situation, when we use the verb call, we cannot start the question with how. We have to start the question with what. So it's correct to say, what do you call this appliance? Or, what do you call this thing? We cannot say, how do you call in this situation. You can also use passive voice and say, what is it called? What is this thing called? And you answer, it's called an appliance. Or it's called a stove. Use passive voice for the answer. So, example, what do you call this appliance? And I answer, it's called a stove. Let's practice. What do you call this appliance? That's right, it's called a stove. So keep watching until the end of this video to practice more with the difference between how do you call and what do you call, and how to say it correctly. This is also not correct. So this one right here is around $700, and it has buttons right here where you can control the heat. I cannot say it has buttons right here where you can control the heat. The problem is they're not buttons. You don't push them. You push buttons. These are knobs. If you turn them, they're not buttons. You turn knobs. You turn the knob to control the heat. So it's correct to say... It has knobs right here where you can control the heat. Because you turn them, we have to call them knobs. They're not buttons. You push buttons and you turn knobs. 
We see the word knob has a K, and the K is silent. Don't pronounce the K. Start with the N sound. Knob. One knob, two knobs. The stove has knobs, and you turn the knobs to control the heat. Let's practice. Does the stove have knobs? That's right, the stove has knobs. Do you turn the knobs to control the heat? That's right, you turn the knobs to control the heat. This is also not correct. And if you would see that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. I cannot say if you would see that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. That's a long sentence, but that's not really the problem. The problem is would. If you would see that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. After if in the sentence, I cannot say would. This structure is called second conditional, and after if, we have to use a past action. We cannot use would after if in this sentence. We have to say, if you saw. If you saw this picture, we have to use saw, the past of see. If you saw that picture, it would look like you were right next to the thing you were taking a picture of. Because it's an imaginary situation, it's not real, we use past after if to express the action that is not real. If you saw that picture. I cannot say if you would see that picture. Example. I cannot say if I would have a lot of money, I would buy a big house. Another imaginary situation. After if, we use the past verb. It's correct to say if I had. If I had a lot of money, I would buy a big house. Let's practice. If you had a lot of money, would you buy a big house or a small house? That's right. If I had a lot of money, I would buy a big house. For example, if I were a millionaire, I would buy a big house. We use the past, were. Because it's not real, we have to use were for everybody. If I were, if he were, if she were. We're not supposed to use was, but if you make a mistake and you use was in the structure, it's okay. A lot of Americans do this too, so it's kind of acceptable now. But the rule says we're supposed to use were. It sounds better. If I were a millionaire, I would buy a big house. What about you? If you were a millionaire, would you buy a big house or a small house? Me too. If I were a millionaire, I would buy a big house. This is also not correct. If you buy something, you will go to the checkout counter and check out your items. I cannot say you will go to the checkout counter and check out your items. It's correct to use checkout as an adjective and say checkout counter. That's what it's called. It's called a checkout counter or the, the checkout counter. But I cannot say check out your items. We cannot use an object with this phrasal verb. You go to the checkout counter and you check out. You cannot use the object. You cannot say your items. You just say, you go to the checkout counter and you check out. You can ask the person at the store, can I check out here? Sure, you can check out here. But you cannot say, can I check out my items here? There's no object with this phrasal verb. If you use an object, you have to say buy or pay for. I need to pay for my items. I need to buy my items. Or I just need to check out. Because if you say, I need to check out my items, then it makes you think of another phrasal verb, check out, which means to look at something. Example, check out my new glasses. Check out. It means to look at something, if you have an object. If I buy a new car, I can say, hey, come and check out my new car. That's a different idea. And that's why when you say check out to mean buy your items or pay for your items, do not use an object. Just say, I need to check out. Where can I check out? But if you buy a new car and you want your friends to look at your new car, you say, come outside and check out my new car. That's different. That's when we use check out plus an object to look at something. So examples, you check out at the checkout counter, but you don't check out your items. You just check out. Again, you can check out at the checkout counter. Let's practice. Can you check out at the checkout counter? That's right, you can check out at the checkout counter. 
Example with checkout plus an object, meaning to look at, I just bought a new car. Do you want to check out my new car? And you say, sure, I'd love to check out your new car. Let's practice. I just bought a new car. Do you want to go check out my new car? Very good. So remember, keep watching to practice more with the difference between how do you call and what do you call. Remember, we don't say how do you call. Keep watching to practice more. First, this is not correct. Mmm. This slushy and this popcorn is delicious. Talking about popcorn, how do you guys call popcorn in your country? It's not correct to say, how do you guys call popcorn? And this is also not correct. Oh yeah, they can even proofread your assay. How's the app called? I want to check it out. Hi, native. Oh wow. It's not correct to say, how's the app called? And here's another teaching video with the title, Here's how we call each finger. But it's not correct to say, here's how we call each finger. As you can see, this is a very common mistake made by non-native speakers. So how do we say it correctly? Well, if you want to know the name of something, it's not correct to say, how do you call it? We have to use the question word, what? We have to say, what do you call it? We cannot use the question word, how, in this case. What do you call that? What do you call that? What do you call it? Then? What do you call it? That hat, what do you call it? What do you call it? When the assassins accuse the assassin. I'm trying to, what do you call it? What do you call it, a fixation, psychosis? Have you thought of that? What do you call that, a goose? She gave it all up to live with a bunch of women and uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a sorority. What do you call it, though, a success? The fact that you're here and doing as well as you're doing gives me, what do you call it, a motivation, huh, to stay alive? So let's look at the question and the answer. The question is, what do you call it? Or I can use passive voice and say, what is it called? I can also make the contraction, what's, and say, what's it called? Oh, this one's good. What's it called again? What's it called again? What is it called? They even got a whole, um, what is it called? So that marbles thing that you were so very smart about, what is it called again? What is it called? The cross-country classic? Uh, Rita, please continue your restoration using Norman's, uh, what is it called again? What's it called again? Shake Shack? When you answer this question, we have to answer with passive voice. It's called. Exactly. It's called first jumping. It's delicious. It's called a Malaga cooler. It's called a gravity drive. It's called a knockout mechanism. It's called the masses. It's called a sand walk. Yes, they do, and horses and pigs and goats and sheep. And, yeah, it's called animal husbandry. It's called a rock blanket. Or if I have something in my hand, I say this. What do you call this? Or I could use passive voice and say, what is this called? And the answer, it's called a plush toy. This is called a plush toy. Let's practice. What do you call this? That's right. This is called a plush toy. Now let's practice the question. Ask me the question. Very good. This is called a plush toy. What if you have two? For example, scissors. Question, what do you call these? These are called scissors. Or I can ask the question, what are these called? Or what are they called? They are called scissors. Let's practice. What are these called? That's right, these are called scissors. Now ask me the question. They're called scissors. Very good. So when can we use the question word how? We can use how with questions like, how do you pronounce? How do you say? And how do you spell? With these verbs, we use the question word how. How do you, how do you pronounce that one? How do you pronounce your name? How do you pronounce this? Uh, and we were curious, uh, how do you pronounce it? Now how do you pronounce your name? Example, how do you pronounce your last name? I answer, it's pronounced Liddell. Let's practice. How do you pronounce your last name? Very good. And with the question, how do you spell your last name? I answer, it's spelled L-I-D-D-E-L-L. -L. Hey, Anne, 
How do you spell freckles? How do you spell zucchini? So how you spell all these words anyway? How do you spell buter, by the way? Peace. How do you spell that? Okay, and how do you spell that? T-R-O-Y. Hey, Josie, how do you spell ugly? How do you spell that? Yes. How do you spell that? Let's practice. How do you spell your last name? Very good. Let's practice with how do you say. I'm not so young anymore, and um, how do you say a little uh, incontinent? How do you say no? Oh my gosh. I know. How do you say that in Espanol? How do you say that in French? How do you say that you're a loving person with this on my face, you yeah. know? How do you say this? How do you say this in your native language? Very good. Let's also look at the difference between a direct question and an indirect question. If I say, what do you call it? That's a direct question. But if I say, do you know? I have to change the structure. Do you know what it's called? I cannot say, do you know what is it called? I cannot use a question structure. I have to use a positive structure after do you know. Do you know what it's called? I know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. You know what it's called? What? New tweeter ends. Oh, I know what it's called. But you can't do this. I know what it's called. Let's practice. Do you know what it's called? That's right, I know what it's called. Ask me the question. Yes, I know what it's called. It's called a plush toy. Very good. Now let's practice the negative answer. Do you know what it's called? I don't know what it's called. Do you know what it's called? That's right, I don't know what it's called either. Very good. Keep watching to learn to avoid another common mistake with the verb call. Today we're talking about an important mistake to avoid using the verb call. I can say, what do they call him? They call him a troublemaker. But I cannot say, how do they call him? When using call, you make the question with what. What do they call him? And also, when you use call, don't use like. They call him like that. No like when you use the verb call. So, I say, why do they call him that? Not, why do they call him like that? Why do they call him that? They call him that because he causes problems. They call him a troublemaker because he causes problems. So again, with the verb call, do not use like. You cannot say, they call him like that. You say, they call him that. Question, why do they call him that? They call him that because he causes problems. He makes trouble. That's why they call him that. Let's practice. What do they call him? That's right. They call him a troublemaker. Why do they call him that? That's right. They call him that because he causes problems. He makes trouble. That's why they call him that. So remember, when using call, use the question word what, never how, and don't put the action call with like. You cannot use the two words together, call and like. You can say speak like that and talk like that, but you cannot say call him like that. It's call him that. A common mistake I've heard from my students is this, the way how I like it. Example, they cook the food the way how I like it is not correct. We cannot put the way and how together. We have to eliminate one. So you can say, they cook the food the way I like it, or you can say, they cook the food how I like it. But you cannot say, they cook the food the way how I like it together. You cannot use the way and how together because they mean basically the same thing. For emphasis, you can use exactly or just. Example, they cook it just the way I like it. Let's practice. Do they cook the food just the way you like it? That's right, they cook it just the way I like it. Example, she's a good cook, so I can say, I like the way she cooks. Or I can say, I like how she cooks. But I cannot say, I like the way how she cooks. I cannot use the way and how together. I have to eliminate one. So I say, I like the way she cooks. Let's practice. Do you like the way she cooks? Very good. I like the way she cooks too. So remember, you cannot say the way how. 
you cannot say the way how I like it. You cannot use the way and how together. You have to eliminate one and use just one. The way or how. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.